Hi there, welcome to Fat's Kitchen. I've been busy today baking boiled rey. Now, translated from Portuguese, this means king's cake. And it gets its name, firstly, from shape, which is like a crown, and also because it is symbolic of the three kings that traveled to find the baby Jesus and to take him gifts. So this is something that is traditionally served over the festive season in Portuguese homes. So the recipe I'm going to share with you today yields two fairly large uh, boiled rays, as you can see, that fit nicely onto a plate and are ideal for storage. But you could just make one very large boiled ray if you wanted to. Now, my husband and I have already tucked into one of them, uh, fresh out of the oven, because it's just, the smells are so heavenly. And um, I just want to show you, so you see you have this very crispy, brown, golden, delicious crust, but on the inside, it's lovely and fluffy and light, filled with fruits mm, and nuts. So this is not like your regular um, dark, rich fruit cake covered in marzipan and icing, which is very heavy especially after a Christmas meal. This is a very light version of a fruit cake, and I would suggest you give this one a try. Now, technically, this is not a cake because the leavening agent is yeast. Now, if you had to go scratch out your grandmother's old recipe, you would see it calls for cake yeast. Now, this is or it looks like fudge almost, and it's usually kept in the refrigerator, but it's not that readily available to home bakers anymore. But what you do get, however, very frequently in the stores is your instant yeast and that is what I'm going to use today. Of course the instant yeast is a very fine grain like this and you just need to mix it in directly with your flour. There's no need to dissolve it and there's no need to make the old-fashioned sponge that was typically used to make the dough. Now during the duration of this video tutorial you're going to see various links popping up around me and if you follow these links they will take you to some of my other video tutorials covering some delicious desserts that is also served over the festive season in Portuguese homes. I hope you will enjoy um, as I show you how to make this delicious baldre. I've wrapped this baldre all up in some cling film and I'm going to pop it into the freezer so that we don't eat it all up and I can share it with my family on Christmas Day. Right, so the evening before you're going to bake your bold ray, you need to prepare your dried fruit. And um, what I did here last night is I mixed 100 grams of seedless raisins together with this packet of 250 grams of chopped glacé fruit and added three tablespoons of this Portuguese port wine and mixed it all up and left it to sleep in the alcohol overnight. This morning I just gave it a quick stir just to make sure all the fruit had enjoyed some of the wine and uh, it is now ready to use and we'll move on to the other ingredients. Right, so I've uh, warmed up 160 milliliters of milk and added it to my bowl. Um, the reason it's warm is well firstly I'm going to melt my butter in this milk. This is soft butter. I left it out overnight. It's 125 grams of butter. It's already pretty melted. It's warm here today. And I'm going to let it continue melting in the warm milk. Now this warming, uh, warm mixture is of course a, an ideal environment for our yeast to grow in. Right now for some really delicious flavor in your bold ray, uh, we're going to use um, the zest of one orange and one lemon. So um, here I have my zester, and I'm just gonna zest it directly into the bowl with the melted butter and milk. Make sure you've uh, washed the oranges on the outside uh, before you begin zesting them. Now you just gently zest, you just wanna get the orange part of the, the peel, not the, the white pith, because that's quite bitter. And you can zest your whole orange into here, and then your lemon. Right, so I've uh, completed zesting my orange and my lemon. Oh, and it just smells delicious. And I'm um, just stirring it through the warm milk and butter mixture. I'm now going to add 150 grams of caster sugar 
into this mixture and then I'm going to mix through I've uh, used large eggs for large eggs and I'm going to add that and just stir this up blend it nicely and we're going to add this soon to our dry ingredients so I've weighed out 625 grams of uh, cake flour and I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt now I find you know it's better with salt and I have here um, an instant yeast and it's very very fine as you can see and a packet like this is about 10 grams and this type of yeast you can add directly to your flour now most of the old recipes um, call for the cake the yeast in the cake form um, and then they usually dissolve that and they make a sponge out of that um, but you can quite easily replace 20 to 30 grams of the cake form of yeast with a packet of instant yeast like right once you've mixed in the yeast and salt into the flour um, I'm going to transfer it now into a mixing bowl but I'm going to transfer most of it but keep some of it aside um, and then after I've added my wet ingredients um, I will then assess the consistency of my dough before I add this last bit of flour and I'm going to mix in a stand mixer but I've done this by hand before um, so you could do it by hand with uh, a dough hook and then I'm going to add my wet ingredients slowly into the mixture Right, so it's been mixing for quite a while and um, as you can see the batter or the dough is sort of running off the dough hook so it's it's still very much a batter consistency so I feel like I'm going to add the rest of my flour at least half of it and then continue mixing I'm looking for um, a dough like texture but with still some stickiness okay I definitely have more of a dough like consistency it's less like a batter um, it's on the sticky side and um, this is how I'm going to I'm going to leave the dough in the bowl now and um, sprinkle it with the rest of this flour and then I'm going to cover it and let the the dough begin its rise now I'm not going to add the fruit and nuts at this stage I first wanted to um, rise a little bit now if you've made dough or sorry bread dough or pizza dough before you're going to notice that this dough does not behave the same way you're not going to um, find that it's going to rise as quickly and as much as a regular bread dough and that is because of the addition of the eggs and the butter and the sugar um, all these fats uh, have an influence on the yeast and how it grows and it does retard the growth of um, the yeast somewhat and um, I'm just going to take a knife and just cut it a little bit here in the center so that it can it can grow now I'm going to leave it covered it's quite warm here um, but if you're staying in a cold region you'll find it'll rise even slower and I'm going to check on it in about an hour's time right, so it's been an hour and 15 minutes and um, mm. you can see how significantly the dough has risen and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to knock it down and I'm going to add my fruits and nuts to it let me just sprinkle the surface a little bit with flour because I suspect it's going to be quite sticky yes the dough is still slightly sticky but nice and elastic and I'm going to throw in 
the nuts. These are chopped walnuts. This is uh, 100 grams of chopped walnuts. And yeah, this is gonna be a bit sticky, so I'm gonna try and mix as much of this fruit in using my spoon. Okay, so the fruits is now incorporated. The dough's gotten a little bit sticky. I'm gonna turn it out now into a very well floured surface because I want to divide my dough up into two. Because I'm going to make two smaller um, ball trays so that I can um, bake them and then I'm going to freeze one for Christmas Day. Here we go, look how rich and fruity that is. Scrape the last bit of dough out of the bowl. Now, uh, I'm gonna just have to make a good guess just flour it so I can handle it a little bit as to what is half and then I'll work with one half of the dough I'm going to shape them into a wreath now and then We'll let that rise again. I'll cover that up just now. I've got here a nice flower tray. I'm going to transfer that. Let's try and get it into. I think I must maybe first get it into a ball shape over here. And then you're going to open up roughly in the middle. You're going to open it up so that you form your wreath shape. Just try and get an equal thickness. And then you're going to take a tin. Um, that you maybe got your beans in. Grease it nicely, you could do that with oil as well. And you're going to place it just now in your center. That's so that you you keep the shape, the wreath shape. Because once it starts rising, you don't want the hole to close up. Right, once you've shaped it into a fairly regular, even wreath shape, it's gonna bake evenly don't have thick and thin pieces you're going to just brush the surface with some egg yolk and of course what is um, so characteristic of the bald ray is that um, it is decorated with uh, some glacé fruits and nuts which I have already here as you can see I've already laid out my fruits and nuts that I'm going to decorate with um, these fruits uh, you would get like this in a container. They're already mixed. Uh, you have different types of glacé fruits. And I have here some slithered almonds. And very, very important, very traditional that uh, you use pine nuts uh, to decorate your ball hay with. And the pine nuts are typically also, you can put it inside and mix it in the, the dough itself as well and not just on the surface. Okay, so I'm going to now, this is um, to what the, the fruit and nuts is going to stick to. So I'm gonna get a little creative now with my fruits. And you can load them on, pack them on here, because of course this is gonna rise, and as it rises, it's going to expand. All right, very important, the figs are always the best. I sort of try and, you can just haphazardly arrange 
your fruits on here but I like to be a little bit um, neater than that and try and place everything symmetrically and then what I typically do is on the outsides I will stick my slithered almonds and you can pack them on as well because as this rises obviously then the, um, the nuts are going to spread out from each other and the pine nuts I will arrange around the top area okay now continue with that right so once you have um, loaded your uh, wreath with the, your glossy fruits and your nuts as you can see here um, then it's ready for its second rise and you can pop your tin in there just so that that hole will stay open over this side you can see this is my second uh, old ray that I've prepared and I've taken a damp cloth and placed it over and the nice thing about this tin is it also helps to create a tent um, over the bald ray as it as it rises and I'll come and check on this in about an hour it's been almost an hour since I shaped my wreath and put my fruit on and you can see that my uh, wreath has become quite puffy and uh, I've now switched my oven on to 180 degrees Celsius so as soon as the oven temperature hits the mark I'm going to pop it in the oven I'm going to pop it into the oven now it bakes for about 30 minutes but in 20 minutes into the bake uh, you're going to need to just cover it with foil uh, just to prevent the nuts um, from burning the nuts and the fruit and it might also be necessary about 15 minutes into the baking time to also turn the pan around so that it browns evenly so you can leave it in there for 15 minutes um, quite easily without opening the oven door and then from 15 minutes turn it around 20 minutes into the time um, cover it with foil to prevent the nuts from burning and in it goes baked you can see it's a very golden brown color and the nuts haven't been burnt because I covered it with foil uh, during the last part of the baking process and what I've been doing now is taking some warmed honey I've just been brushing the warmed honey over the cake to glaze it now you can also use warm apricot jam um, to do this and uh, you can even with the honey you can even stick a few more nuts because you can see as it rises the nuts kind of spread out and then what I have here is powdered sugar it's also traditional to uh, now I'm gonna do this when it's cooler to sprinkle just in sections some powdered sugar as you probably will see in my thumbnail Ta -da! my completed bald ray fit for a king the powdered sugar makes it look like it's been sprinkled with snow and I love the pop of the color of the red and the green cherries makes it look so festive, ideal for your Christmas dessert table. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, please click like and subscribe to my channel for more delicious treats. Thank you so much for watching. Until I see you the next time, bye-bye.